Welcome to the second in our Senex View video tutorials connecting to the sensor. We begin in the main workspace window and to connect to the sensor we go to the sensor menu, come down to connect, and here you see the first 12 ports in my computer displayed with their status. It turns out that COM1 is a dedicated serial port, RS-232. COM2 happens to be a USB converter with 485 on it. But in this case I have a 232 sensor, so that's where we'll stay. And I'm on network address 1. If I didn't know where the sensor was, our Find Sensor application would do a scan survey for you. But since I do, let's just connect. You have a choice of copying the sensor setup to your workspace so that you can work on it, or taking what's in the workspace and putting it in the sensor. And the decision as to whether you overwrite the workspace or not takes place right here. Let's say yes, but obviously if I had brought a configuration file from disk into the workspace, I would not want to overwrite that. So you can choose. In any case, we're going to look at the various display tools that are available to you on the toolbar. At this point, we're looking at a wall a little over six feet from my sensor. First of all, if I were attempting to move that wall to some precise location, or move my sensor against it, uh, a large display may help me see what's on the computer, and you can go to that. There are some display options. Uh, I'm going to stay with distance, but if you had an analog output or a switch, you could display that here as well. There is a data chart option. It can be a strip chart, an oscilloscope, or it can be set for single pass. I happen to prefer a strip chart. I've got the gain set for maximum, which indicates ten thousandths of an inch in, the, um, in each box in the vertical axis. And here we've got some environmental noise. Uh, affecting our six-foot measurement uh, to the point of about 30 thousandths of an inch. And it may hold still for a while, plus or minus 10 thousandths, and then bounce up. This is typical of what's going on in the environment. In a laboratory environment, I can have it sit plus or minus 10 thou all day long, as long as I don't disturb the temperature or the, uh, the air movement in the room. I can also change the x-axis speed here, if I wanted to look for a longer period of time, set it for one minute per division. But you will be watching the grass grow while that takes place, as you can see here. Barely. One more thing of interest if you're trying to characterize a sensor is the statistics package. Here I can specify a number of samples to be taken. In this case, I have 10 programmed in. And I can tell it to go take 10 samples, display the mean distance, and the noise or standard deviation in that measurement. I'm never happy with all zeros. And inevitably, if you take the measurement again and again, you'll see the noise will change. But generally speaking, you get a noise reduction uh, equivalent to the square root of the number of samples you take, uh, which would be of great value to you uh, in either selecting how you configure your sensor uh, or how you interpret your data. But again, this statistics package is for evaluating the environment your sensor is in. Uh, in our next session, we're going to get into the actual configuration of the sensor, and I'll show you how you can do that real time. One other thing in the data display mode, however, that's worth pointing out here, if I go to the edit menu, I can go to user preferences. There are several choices here that you can review offline, but one of them is distance units. If I were in a metric environment, I might want to see this in centimeters, for example. And having selected that, you now see 188 and change displayed. So those are some of the highlights in the connect to sensor space. One other thing that should be mentioned, very briefly, if you happen to be working with a sensor that's on a USB interface, Windows is sometimes cranky in with different versions of Windows as to how it deals with virtual COM ports via USB. And those will be dealt with in a separate tutorial in greater detail. If you have a problem with that and the tutorial about USB interfaces is not on your CD, give us a call and we can help you out. In our next session, we're going to go to the workspace again and we're going to look at the details in the measure window 
which allow us to configure a sensor.